Good morning friends. This is Chris with Wood Dig DIY. I have an exciting video today. Today we are going to be buying a skid loader. I found this skid loader on the marketplace for a great price. It's pretty much scrap value, so I can't complain on the price. It is a 65 to 70. It's a temper toter log skidder. The guy says it's a 330. I'm not 100% sure though. I'm trying, I was trying to do some research on it and I've seen some 300s that look very similar. Not too much information. It's made, it was made by Wanashi um, out of BC and it has the Detroit engine 453 with the blower doesn't have a turbo and it has Clark axles and uh, transmission I believe um, and it has a gearmatic winch on it so when I went to look at it everything looked pretty good he said he bought it from an old timer and he took really good care of it it has a pretty nice exhaust on it and it has a new spark arrestor so that's a plus and all the, the protective great grates like around the engine that like most logging from have um none of it has dents in it it looks like they took pretty good care of it so for the price i can't pass it up i was gonna pass it up because i couldn't find anybody to haul it but i did find someone to haul it for a reasonable price so i'm truly grateful for that and the width is under 102 inches so we do not need any special moving permits to move it now it is going to be a little skinnier on the hill so i'm gonna have to make sure i be careful i don't flip it because you really want wider skidders when you're on hills so you don't roll them over because they are pretty tall but if you go over the 102 if you run those big wide tires you're gonna have to get a special moving permit here in california or they will give you a big fine if they catch you moving it without one so it's about two hours from where i'm at closer to the bay area to go pick this thing up there is pretty good space for the equipment trailer to pull in there it's, I don't know exactly what kind of trailer it is. It, it's not a low boy. It might be some kind of a tilt deck, but it's a beastie trailer that the guy's using. So I believe he said it's rated for 60,000 pounds or 68,000, something like that. But yeah, anyways, let's get into it.
Okay, friends. So here's the skitter. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to just try to check the fluids, and I'm hoping to see how much damage is inside this winch. When I bought it, when I was looking at it, at least uh, it seems like everything was pretty good. I checked the fluids. The radiator fluid was good. It had a nice green radiator fluid in there. Uh, the oil was good. The hydraulic oil seemed like it's a little low. I haven't quite found the dipstick yet, but I noticed when I was trying to steer it when we were coming to the house, when we unloaded it and I was wheeling it down the road, I could notice that the hydraulic pump is winding a little bit. So whenever I would steer, so I'm thinking it's probably low on fluid a little bit or the filters plugged up a little bit. My main concern with this thing is the winch. I was looking up prices. This is uh let's see here. This is a Gearmatic 19. It seems like these winches are kind of expensive, the parts at least. I think they can get the seals and stuff and gaskets are pretty cheap. But if you have to get a brake band or the clutch band, uh, they can be several hundred dollars. Um, I seen one that was 400 bucks, but I didn't really dig around too much looking for good deals. I was just glancing on Google for a little bit. I want to find all the grease irks, so I guess this machine is supposed to be a timber toter. Yeah, it's a timber toter 300. So there is not hardly any information on this machine. I looked online and I seen uh, one of these similar units. It just had two winches on the back instead of one. And that one was on an online auction for five grand or something like that. And I noticed that it said it had an Allison transmission. So hopefully this thing has an Allison transmission. That would be great. But so far I can't find anything on it. Feel free to drop a comment down below if you know anything about these timber toter log skitters. I sure would appreciate it because there is literally hardly any information on these. The guy I bought it from said it has Clark axles and a Clark transmission and it has the 453 Detroit diesel in it. And this thing fires right up. So I'm glad about that. I smelled the oil. Uh, it did smell a little bit like diesel, but it wasn't super watery, so hopefully he just didn't just service the oil or something. And that was like some oil that ran through the machine, that way I could get an idea on how they ran it. Because what I've been looking up is with these older Detroits, you're supposed to run the RPMs up pretty high, otherwise the oil will get diluted with diesel, because the combustion system doesn't, it's not really designed to for low RPMs are kind of like chainsaws. They gotta run at like, you know, the higher end of the RPM. Otherwise they start getting fouled out. And then your oil gets diluted and yeah, your pistons and rings are just gonna not last that long because you got water, oil pretty much, water down oil with diesel. And it can cause them to run away too, so. So these Detroits have a blower motor on them. This is the NA one with just a blower. I think some of them have turbos and the blower or something like that feel free to drop a comment down below if you know more than me i don't know much about these detroits all i know about them is uh we had an old 518 skidder with the detroit in it and we never worked on the engine that thing started every time and they're super loud they're two strokes and they have a blower on them so but the good thing is they usually start and I believe they're a little on the lower compression side, so starting them in the winter is a little easier compared to some diesels. I know a lot of the four-stroke diesels, um, you have to warm them up a little bit to get them started. Otherwise, it's going to be real hard to start them. And if they do start, it's pretty hard on the starter when they're uh, on the tail end of their life, when they're more worn out. But um, I've seen these engines. Uh, I work for this one guy. He had a 518 that had like 11,000 hours on it and it still had the original engine. Um, they did have to use starting fluid to start that thing, but that's crazy that the engine like that could last that long. So the main reason I got this skitter was because it has uh, skinnier tires on it and it's under 102 inches. So you don't need a special permit to move it. You can just load it up on a truck and move it. Uh, a lot of these log skitters, they're over 102, so it's a whole other can of worms when you got to move something like this. Um, a lot more money you're talking. It's already quite a bit of money to move them like this. Now the downfall is this machine 
is skinny. So you have to be careful on the hills because it'll want to flip over. But this machine's actually not too bad compared to like the John Deere 440s. Um, the only skitter I've actually ran is a 518 cat. So I've never ran any other skitter, just the 518 cat. So I'm gonna have to get used to this thing. It's it's a little old school. So my goal today is to go through the fluids and um, possibly grease it up. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna get the greasing today, but um, my goal for today is to check the fluids. The winch, the winch is not working. It's not engaging. So I don't know if that's good or bad. At least it's not stuck. I've seen it where these things are stuck. So. The guy says it's probably sat for uh, at least four years. And you can kind of see the rust on the, the rollers. This thing hasn't moved in a long time. So, from my research, I noticed a lot of guys have problems with them sticking. So, this one's not sticking. So I think either there's a seal out and there's oil leaking on the bands. So it's just not grabbing. Or maybe the bands are out of uh, adjustment. Maybe this thing needs more fluid in it. Um, I'm gonna top that off first before I do anything else. And we also need to check these final drives. And this arrow says it has to be pointed down. So I guess I gotta idle, idle this thing <laughs> and check all these final drives with this arrow down. So there you go, it's supposed to be idling. That isn't good for it, right? It's supposed to run pretty hard. So yeah, see, this arrow is almost down. So I'm gonna have to move it for each individual final drive to check it. So good thing is I checked them. This one looks like it's got a super slow leak. This one's got a super slow leak. It's not puking. And I believe the other final drives, they look pretty good. I mean, this machine's from the 60s, so you can't expect much. I don't know if they're full of water or not. So this one looks like it's not, it's not puking, but it's got super slow leak. And then this one looks clean, so that's a start. My main concern is the winch and getting the fluids checked on the transmission and hopefully I can find out what kind of oil this takes it's an automatic transmission so probably just ATF I'll have to do some research figure it out I guess and when I was looking at it kind of sketchy had two brand new batteries in there and I noticed when I got it today it's got this old battery in here now and he left this terminal just bouncing in here so that could start a fire, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this terminal in black tape real quick so it doesn't start a fire. Uh, I did not know that. It did have two brand new batteries in here, otherwise I would have fixed that. Uh, I wish he would have told me that he did that. Uh, that was not part of the deal. So it does look like it'll start with one battery, so... I guess, yeah. <laughs> I got a real good deal for this, so I'm not going to complain too much. This seat, it looks like someone put a new seat on here. And I want to make sure, maybe I can get this thing adjusted. That's obviously going to be down the road. Like I said, my main concern is I want to make sure this thing's not a lemon. Um, if it's a lemon, I'm probably going to scrap it or just sell it for cheap. Or just sell it for what I got into it, because... Uh, I don't want to dump a bunch of money into this thing and I, I, these machines are hard to get parts for so I don't want to dump a bunch of money into it and then realize something major breaks I can't even fix so we'll have to make sure it's not a lemon before we put any money in there. This thing is kind of concerning. We might have a, a bearing out in the winch. I don't think that's supposed to move around. And, I got it neutral so I can spin this. Doesn't look like this tightens up. It's really strange. Drop a comment down below if you know. Maybe there's a set screw in there I gotta tighten up. If I can get the fly. 
flashlight in there. Yeah, that doesn't look like there's no screws in there. Weird. Maybe it just floats, slides back and forth on that on that shaft. But yeah, it's gonna be hard to get this thing to take grease. That's probably why I'm gonna do it a different day, because I might have to heat up a lot of these grease zerks so they'll take grease because when they sit a long time like this it's super hard to get them to take grease and it's super dry right now so I don't know how much I want to be running the torch and this thing needs to be power washed there is all kinds of nasty fire hazard stuff down there a bunch of leaves covered in oil that will take out your machine in a blink of an eye that catches on fire so before I get out the torch, I'm going to have to power wash this thing. And it looks like it's leaking a little bit, but not too bad. For this old of a machine, it's not too bad. Hopefully this doesn't puke. I want to make sure the transmission's holding oil. It looks like it's leaking a little bit, but it's not like puking on the ground or anything, so that's good. But this thing has a lot of grease irks and all these drive lines. I got to get these drive lines greased up, but I don't know if I'll be able to heat them up with a torch and all that crud under there. Yeah, I'm going to have to power wash that. I'm going to have to take these plates off so we can get to the transmission and check the fluid. Because next time I run the town, I want to get some fluid and I'm going to get some gear oil for the final drives. And the oil on the engine actually looked pretty good. So let's check the fuel tank. Definitely the biggest machine I have owned. Oh man. Dang. Oh, it does fit tight. Okay, I was gonna say that's not a good sign. This tank is in pretty good shape. Oh, nice. Look at that. It has a full tank of diesel. It does look pretty rusty, but. I just ran it and I'm not seeing a bunch of floaties in the diesel, so that's good. I could do electrolysis on this and clean this tank out down the road, but right now, I'll probably just put filters on it, make sure I run some good filters. I'm gonna have to get a different fuel cap. That one's seal's broken. So yeah, it's got a full tank. So what I can see, the only cosmetic damage this thing really has is the dent in the tank. So, I don't know what happened there. Maybe the winch snapped and hit the tank. That's what I'm thinking. This thing probably snapped a cable or a tree fell on it. Drop a comment down below if you have an idea what happened to this thing. I got smashed pretty good, but... This tank's super thin too. Wow. And then he said the old timer that owned it before him patched up a hole right there. It's rubber mounted on rubber, so that's good. So this thing has not moved in ages, so let's start with the transmission. Or let's start with the oil on this and then we'll start with the transmission fluid. Okay, let's clean up this terminal. Or I'm gonna put some tape on it to sort of short out. Pretty sketchy. That's silly that he did that. One of the pine points was I seen it had new batteries. Oh man, this guy probably really took care of this thing. And the fluids are good. Oh well, it is what it is. The last person I dealt with on Facebook was pretty brutal. The guy's like, I was looking at this uh, tractor and the guy's like eight hours away and there was like another scrap value deal and I was like well I'll buy it for sure so I brought my trailer and stuff up there and then I asked him before I went up there I was like you know you know I'm not gonna buy it if it has water in the transmission or the engine he's like oh yeah it doesn't have water in the engine or the transmission so, alright, so I get up there, eight hours driving, bam, it's got water in the engine. I'm just like, wow, that was a waste of time. So, here I am, <laughs> eight hours, so I had to drive a whole day for no reason. 
so. Okay, so I was reading this label up here. Timber Toter Scooter Model 300. Manufactured by Kilwani Machine Works LTD Kilwani VC. So, what's weird is I was looking at the torque converter. It says Clark. So I'm guessing it's got a Clark transmission. Takes automatic transmission fluid type A. That's normal. Drive axles. This gear oil. Power steering and hydraulics. Automatic transmission fluid type A. So I don't put hydraulic fluid. I'm supposed to put ATF in this thing for the hydraulics. Feel free to drop a comment down below. Uh, what do you think about this? Because that kind of spun me for a loop. I got plenty of hydraulic fluid. I do not have that much ATF. This thing probably holds a lot of ATF, I do guess. So, hand oiling. Engine oil. Wheel bearings. All year. A, B, I, and load of grease. Chassis. Chevron Duralith. Grease EP2 for summer, EP0 for winter. Okay. Weird. Yeah, automatic transmission fluid for the hydraulics. That is strange. And then I was looking down here, you guys probably can't see, but it says it was manufactured in 68. And obviously the RPM and hour meters toast. <laughs> So, I don't think this thing works either. So, I think the only thing that works is uh, both of these gauges, the temperature gauge and wheel pressure gauge. So. Okay, I got that terminal covered up. Now we're gonna work on this. Okay, before we get started on the winch, I'm just gonna double check the fluids, make sure this isn't a lemon. I checked the oil when I looked at it, and it was fine. I'm seeing some moisture coming out of this overflow cap, so I just want to make sure this engine's solid. Oh man, this thing is so heavy. Mm. Dipstick. I just want to double check. Is that red? I can't tell. It says it's supposed to take ATF for the hydraulics. That's strange. There's the tank. That is so much ATF. If I have to put ATF in there, that's gonna be... I guess I'll just check it. Maybe the modern hydraulic fluid's good enough. I believe that's the blower, right? Totally new to these Detroits, so drop a comment down below if I'm wrong. I believe that's a blower. It looks like that's hooked up to some drive gears. It's got two blowers, and that's the intake. Pretty sure. I don't like how they painted the engine, but that is what it is. Oh man. Look at that big filter. Whoa. That looks like a hydraulic filter. And oh boy, that thing is in rough, rough shape. That's gonna be expensive. Oh yeah, that thing is massive. That's like, about the same size as my backhoe. That should be hard to find. I'm gonna have to figure that one out. Not it smells like hydraulic fluid. Yeah, weird. Okay, we're back to the winch, and this is just a temporary fix. I'm gonna have to fix that obviously, but just so it doesn't spark and cause a fire for now. So it's arcing out on this hose. Now we can work on the hydraulic. Let's see if I can. Get this thing to spin. This should probably pop the hose out. Make sure there's no moisture in there, but it looks like someone was already in there, so. Well, it looks low. Yeah, 
parts. Independently. Whoa. So let's see, hopefully that's not leaking inside the winch and slip on the drum. Well, hopefully it doesn't have a leak because that was a lot of brake fluid. That was about 16 ounces. Well, that might, hopefully that's a quick fix. That would be awesome. I have to figure out how to bleed this thing. Or maybe it's a super slow leak and we can still get something done. Okay, so that's the hose. Let's track it back down to the machine. Looks like it's got interesting. And that's got tape on it, so that's not good. So I wish I knew which one was what. One engages it and one puts it in neutral. I'm guessing they both got air. Don't want to mess with that because I'm seeing plumber's tape. Guess it is what it is. Okay, a little bit of blaster. I can just loosen these up to get some air out of the system. Oh, nice. That's what I'm talking about. Sweet. Okay, I probably shouldn't be using vice grips, but okay, I'm gonna do one at a time. Let's see if anything comes out. Yeah, it seems like quite a bit of stuff came out. Let's just do a little at a time. I got something holding the stick down, so it doesn't suck more air in there. Looks like they had issues with water getting in there the way this is silicone. The blue sealant, I haven't seen that stuff in a long time. Okay. Now let's see if I can crack this one. wants to spin the whole unit, so that one has tape on it, so maybe I'll just leave that one alone. See if I can get it loose enough to get some air to come out. See, this is a newer brake line. I'm guessing they worked on this at least a couple years ago. Well, not a couple, probably like five or six years. This is a newer brake line. That probably broke. Let's see if I can get a strap for this handle real quick. I believe this is British and this is a standard hose. When they went to the parts store and they got this made, I believe it's a standard because the threads just don't fit on there that good. And they're not stripped or anything. They're just a little bigger than this one. So I think that's what's going on. So I might have to go get a standard to British adapter or yeah, I gotta figure this out. This is a little loose on here. Either that or just the wrong size. So I should be able to get an adapter for this because this hose will cost a lot of money if you get a new hose made. And this one still looks like it's pretty new. But So I got it sealed up some. It has a slow drip. So I was able to get the air out of the line. And now this thing is real stiff. And when I put this forward, you can see it leaking a little bit. So. One of them's for disengage and one of them's for engage, so we'll see. That might be enough to, uh, yeah, you see, I got the air out of it. I think that's enough to get it engaged to so test the winch out and make sure it's working. And then I use this strap to hold pressure while I bled the line since I don't have anyone here helping me. So I'm going to go get my fresh fire extinguisher. We're going to fire this up and see if I can get this winch to do anything. And the next step will be the transmission. 
and then once I check the transmission, make sure it's not puking, I'll feel pretty confident that I can service this thing. I'll start on the greasers, and then we'll get the final drives serviced. And I would like to find a new hydraulic filter. That's gonna be a pain in the butt. I don't know where to get a hydraulic filter like that. That thing is massive. It's so rusty, I doubt there's gonna be any part numbers on it. So we'll see what happens. Hey friends, so I started this thing up and it wouldn't rev out like it was bogging out. And I did pull this emergency switch out. And what it does is it blocks the flap on the blower to kill the engine. And uh, yeah, I shouldn't have hit that. It just had paint over it so I couldn't, I didn't read it right. So go ahead and pull it in, babe. So that's the little valve. Once you pull that emergency, you have to put it back. Okay, push it, push it back in. Now it's open, so it should rev out. I'm gonna leave this open for now, just in case there's a fire. It should run good. We're gonna hook the winch up to the tree, see if we can break it loose since we have pressure. We do have a slow leak we need to fix, but at least we can see the winch is gonna work or not. Let's see if I have to do anything else. Okay friends, so this hack job's not working. It won't let the winch free spool, but I got the air out on the engage side. So now the winch will engage. It's still not really working like it's supposed to, but probably got a bunch of rust in there. I gotta work it out. 
pretty sure if I pull this out a couple times and keep working it, it'll it'll get back to normal. I would peel this off and service it, but it looks like someone was already in there not too long ago. So hopefully they did a good job and I don't have to tear this off again. Uh, probably should because there might be moisture in there, but it looks like they sealed it up pretty good. So hopefully it's sealed up. So yeah, everything's working good. We got to get the brakes next. So I'm going to check the brakes real quick because they're hardly working. For about an hour I have to jack the bottom of the brake spring up so I could get a little more slack to get this in. Now I just gotta put the powder can in here and adjust the brake. Are you putting on the okay so I think the parking brake's working now Okay, friends, so I think I'm going to try to tighten this up a little more. This is where you tighten it up. Hopefully I can get it to break loose. Okay, so that I noticed there is water coming out of this winch, so I'm going to try to drain it, if I can find a drain hole, it's kind of weird, oil level. Is that the drain plug? So weird. How do you drain the oil on this thing? I really don't want to pop this whole cover off. What a pain. Okay, now we're going to try to drain the oil because I'm seeing water drip out from the winch. So I'm going to get that out. Probably let it drain overnight and then we'll get some fresh oil in there. pop the drain plug on the other side maybe it'll flow out a little better okay friends we just got the e-brake working pretty good we just worked on the brake band in a previous video so now to use this e-brake on this timber toter this thing was rusted completely solid here so I whacked it with the screwdriver a bunch of times and some PB blaster and finally got it to Brake loose now it locks, so this kind of e-brake is pretty cool. 
pushing on this brake real hard if you're winching a log or something. And then pull this lever back and then pop this back and then it locks place. So you can winch some trees when you're not in the skitter. Pretty nice on a wheel loader to have one of these. That uh, was one of the main things I wanted to fix. So we know what's wrong with the winch. Um, I think there is water in the winch though. I need to fix these brakes. They're not working that good. I don't know if I just need to work them. We'll take this plate off and figure out what's going on down here. Okay friends, we found out how the water was getting in. This cap is pretty much done. Try to flush this out with some diesel. I should probably use kerosene, but diesel's not that corrosive and it also sucks up moisture so it'll help get the water out. So hopefully I get this poured in real slowly. As you can see, there wasn't much oil in there. Hoping there's not more. It's really thick, it's still coming out. So I think I'm gonna cap this, fill it full of diesel, and then flush it out tomorrow, let it soak overnight, and I'll let it drain all day. And then we'll put some good oil in there with detergent in it. Okay, friends, see that? One out of there. Gonna need a bearing right there. Bearing and a seal, most likely. Stuff. I'm gonna get all this sprayed with blaster so it's easy to disassemble. There's a big ass leak. 